RGB fans. Love them or hate them, it looks like they're here to stay. So which ones give you the best light show, the easiest installation, and the most options? Let's find out. The new Dark Base 700 from Be Quiet features a spacious interior with room for up to EATX motherboards, built-in PWM fan hub, and legendary Be Quiet build quality with included Silent Wings fans. Take advantage of its full modularity by removing or adding panels or even completely inverting the motherboard tray. Thanks to its LED accent trim that you can configure through any RGB header, it'll look great no matter how you build. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. The RGB craze isn't going away anytime soon. While some people can't stand all that bling, I personally think it's great. It's just more customizability that you can add to your project. A direct result of computer building becoming more and more about personal expression. Don't like the lights? Turn them off. Have a build that you're constantly swapping parts in and out of? Just change the fan color to match. Want a seizure? We could probably do that too. I've gathered RGB fans from Corsair, Cooler Master, InWin, DeepCool, NZXT, and Thermaltake for our comparison today. And we're going to mix in some objective facts with a lot of absolutely subjective analysis. Just a couple things to keep in mind though before we dive in. I have a mix of 120mm and 140mm fans here. Yes, this makes a huge difference in noise and volume of air moved, which is why the focus of today's content will be the appearance of each unit as well as how they're set up and controlled. In-depth analysis of acoustics and efficiency we'll have to wait for another video, which I could definitely explore if interest is high enough, so be sure to let me know in the comments down below if that's something that might appeal to you. I'll be presenting plenty of footage of the fans themselves along with my own opinion on their lighting capabilities. Because I'll be showing the fans a lot, feel free to form your own opinions here. This is kind of what this video is supposed to be about. I've gathered all these fans in one place for you guys to take a look at not to tell you which one is definitively best. That, as with most things, is purely a matter of personal preference. Please keep in mind that time constraints prevent me from demonstrating all of the different lighting effects each fan is capable of. But unless I specifically say otherwise, assume that they all can do the usual RGB things like rainbow, flashing, breathing, etc. On to the contestants today. Our first two products are from Corsair, and one of them is a brand new release. First up is the very popular HD 120 RGB. The first thing that stands out about these is that they are bright. They're actually almost bright to a fault, as if you have a few of these inside your case, you probably won't need any other lighting. The LEDs around the perimeter give off a much harsher tone and aren't diffused nearly as much as the LL fans. And as a result, the colors aren't as well defined because you're effectively kind of staring at bulbs. That's not to say I don't like these actually, far from it, and I've used them in my Dark Crystal build in the past. A three pack of these comes with a lighting node pro as well as an inline control module. Corsair's link software can be used to configure the lighting or you can use the physical buttons to cycle through some presets. In my experience, the lighting node plus the control module plus the two cables per fan can lead to a real mess when trying to cable manage. But one of the benefits of going with a product from Corsair is that their ecosystem is so vast you can connect and coordinate almost every part of your system with it. Also from Corsair and utilizing the same control system are the brand new LL120s. I use these in my October monthly build and I have to say that these are one of the brightest fans out there. And the colors, oh man, the colors are so good. There are LEDs illuminating the fan blades and then a completely separate set inside the fat outer ring, giving the appearance of a loop around the outside. The RGB presentation is pretty amazing, and I have to say maybe I should have saved these for last. I think these are the nicest looking overall package in our test, as the light is vibrant and evenly diffused. However, there's a catch. They're also the most expensive at $120 for a three pack. Yes, you get a controller included, but that's still $40 per fan. Do you want to spend that much on cooling? Cooler Master's Master Air series of RGB fans was shown off at CES this year and have made appearances in things like their H500P as well as their new Master Liquid AIO. Their lighting is definitely different than what we saw with Corsair as the spinning fan blades create a full disc of light inside the fan frame. Although the end result 
isn't quite as bright as Corsair's products. The good thing is the translucent blades provide some diffusion, so the light is soft and fairly well balanced. The light comes from four bulbs inside the hub and projects outwards, which to be honest is probably the easiest way to make a fan light up, but I still think these look really nice when all is said and done. I just maybe wish they were a little brighter. A three pack with a controller is $85, but one of the best points about these is that you don't actually need the controller if you have an available RGB header on your motherboard. The fans can just plug right in and be used with Asus R-Sync or MSI Mystic Lite. The flexibility is definitely nice to have. Moving along to two products from Inwin, the Polaris and the Aurora, I just wanna first take a look at how enormous the box is for the Aurora fans. It's the size of a keyboard. Inwin did this as these are their signature line of fans. However, once I got them out of the box and turned them on, I honestly wasn't all that impressed with their presentation. The construction of the housing feels pretty premium and it's heavier and more substantial feeling than most. Also, the corners have nice rubber feet on them to prevent vibration and I definitely appreciate the ability to daisy chain the fans together to prevent having to run individual cables back to the control module. However, the light looks kind of underwhelming in person. There are four LEDs embedded in the perimeter of the housing that look okay and are fully configurable through software. But when you look at them next to the Corsair or Cooler Master fans, they end up looking kind of plain. It was hard for me to find actual pricing on these as they're not really readily available, but they're supposed to go for somewhere around $100 for this three pack. I actually much prefer the look of these, the Polaris fans, which are rather unique and also are much cheaper at $40 for a two pack. They have a transparent circular housing and frosted blades with six LEDs at the center of the hub. The increased number of light sources along with shining outwards produces a much more even and soft light, which can also be seen from the side of the fan due to the design of the frame. Again, Inwin allows you to daisy chain them together, which is super convenient, but this time you can hook up to any onboard RGB header for control through your motherboard software. The setup is also fairly painless as you're not dealing with a separate controller and the provided cables are configured with a built-in splitter to limit the amount of plugs you'll need. These fans were honestly, surprisingly, one of my favorites and were noticeably quieter than average as well. The Deepcool RF120s were unfamiliar to me before I started putting together this video, but surprised me with their solid design choices and overall quiet operation, almost as quiet as the Polaris. The black plastic housing has rubber dampers on the corners and blades that act as diffusers for the LEDs at the center. The result is a nice even light that reminds me of how the Corsair SP120 RGB fans look. There is a small inline controller that looks a lot like a headset remote that lets you cycle through some presets. And they also are Aura Sync, MSI Mystic Lite, Gigabyte RGB Fusion, and ASRock RGB compatible via an open header. These are the cheapest fans here at only $50 for a three pack, and I think they offer the best value for the money. NZXT's Air series of fans came out last year, and I've used them in a few builds since mainly paired with their Kraken X62 cooler where everything can be controlled and synced up by their CAM software. This footage is from my current daily driver where I have six of their air fans installed along with the Kraken. NZXT was really the first company to introduce the nice diffused look to their lighting and others have followed suit. The outer ring of these fans provides a nice even glow along with fairly accurate colors. Given the position of the LEDs, you're not really getting any light down onto the inner blades of the fan, but the whole setup still really works. One negative is that you'll need to find room inside your case for a Hue Plus in order to control everything. Also, they aren't the cheapest, as although you can score three 120 millimeter fans for $75, that doesn't come with the controller, and that's another 40 bucks. I'll also say perhaps the biggest negative about NZXT system is the wire clutter. Between the three wires needed for the Hue Plus and two individual wires for each fan, things can get messy real quick. The fact that you can daisy chain the LED controllers for the fans is nice, but you still need to run the fan control wire back to the motherboard individually. And lastly, we come to Thermaltake's Ring RGB fans. Now, I made a mistake here. I did not get the Ring Plus fans. These are the standard versions. The Plus have much better illumination, unfortunately, although the basic design is pretty much the same. And through some movie magic, we can actually take a look at both as I'll mix in some footage I shot of their Flow Ring 360, which comes with the pluses. 
Ring fans have been around for a number of years now and have gone through several different iterations. Thermaltake was one of the leaders in putting LEDs on fans, and they went RGB pretty early as well. These fans use a ring of LEDs in a clear tube around the inside of the fan housing to project light outward and also down onto the blades. They are fairly bright and definitely draw your eye. And the housing design is such that you can actually see the color from the outside as well, which is pretty cool. The wiring from the fans has a proprietary connector, which means you absolutely need to have a controller to use them. But the bright side of this is that Thermaltake has combined the PWM signal, the RGB signal, and the power into one cable, making these fairly convenient to set up. A triple pack of the Ring Plus with controller goes for $109. However, you can get a set of these for about half that. Overall, here is my final verdict. Best value for the money? goes to Deepcool. $50 for three fans and a controller seems like a bargain compared to what else is out there. With the in-win Polaris coming in a close second as you can get three of these fans for $60. Easiest setup goes to Thermaltake with their one cable to rule them all setup. Quietest fan was the in-win Polaris. Best RGB implementation is all Corsair with their amazing LL120s. And best overall fan? Well, that's up to you to decide. So which one of these eight is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments. Also don't forget that you can help support both my channel and your coffee habit by buying a mug in my merchandise store link down below. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. And as always guys, thanks for watching.